It's time to have your say. Welcome back to the Q&A, answering your questions on WWE, AEW, and much, much more. Ask SCW will commence straight after this. So welcome back. As always, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And hit that beautiful notification bell. You know each and every time a video is released on the channel. Coming up on today's Q&A, Cody Rhodes is the hot topic once again. Of course, it's now... Per uh, PW Insider, Mike Johnson has said that Cody Rhodes is signed with WWE as of 10 to 14 days ago. Going to give my take on how I think he'll debut, the dream matches in place, how he should be booked in WWE and much, much more. As well as that coming up in the video, Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 38. Should there be a stipulation added at this point with the way the storyline direction is heading? We'll be talking more on that. Sami Zayn and Johnny Knoxville as well and not forgetting also Blood and Guts for AEW, who should be involved in that barbaric structure in 2022. But quickly, if you want to be involved on the next episode of Ask SCW and get yourself a shout out as well, drop a question in the comments below with the hashtag Ask SCW. I know to include it and give you a shout out. Or alternatively, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all should be covered on your screen right about now. And you can drop a question on there with the hashtag Ask SCW. But without further ado, let's get on with our first question this week. And it comes from Anthony New saying, now that Cody Rhodes has signed with WWE, do you see him returning before, during, or after WrestleMania 38? Great question to kick things off. I think everybody thought he was going to be debuting in Jacksonville this past Monday on Raw. That seemed to be the place that a lot of people thought it was going to happen, but it didn't happen. But I do feel there was a lot of subtle hints given during the show that Cody would still be in and around at WrestleMania. So I'm not surprised by the news that has broken via Mike Johnson at PW Insider. Because if you look at the way that Raw ended this week with Seth Rollins, again, he still does not have an opponent for WrestleMania. You'd have thought that if there was any backup plans in place for WWE and Cody wasn't going to be there, that those plans would have started taking some motion. Instead, he was going after KO spot of WrestleMania, which for me was a bit of a bizarre move to be honest, but uh, hey, it is what it is. But of course we expected KO would win that match uh, and that would leave Seth still in the same sort of problems. Would Cody then have appeared after that? He didn't. But of course, commentary did make references of the terms nightmare. Uh, his WrestleMania dreams had been dashed as well. So all these sort of Cody Rhodes references made me think it's still going to happen and now we know it is going to happen but the question is like you said that it's going to happen before during or after WrestleMania well for me it's definitely going to be at WrestleMania and here's the idea I think that they're going down because it's kind of going to play out like almost two previous storylines we've seen in recent years combined together as one if you remember a few years ago to WrestleMania 34 John Cena didn't have a path to WrestleMania he thought his only way was the Undertaker Seth Rollins is kind of going through a similar thing right now he's trying to find this path to get onto WrestleMania but he doesn't have an Undertaker he can call upon so it's going to be interesting to see what Seth is going to do these next couple of weeks but it feels to me that Seth is going to fail at every turn turn up at WrestleMania almost to the point that maybe it could even just be an open challenge where I think everybody and their dog will know that it'll be Cody that will answer at WrestleMania but to go on Cody's side of things it could be similar of a debut like the Hardy Boys had at WrestleMania 33. I think that's the dynamic and that's the direction they're going to play this match out because then Cody can come in on that night can be seen as the big surprise. Cody will pick up the big victory as well. It sort of protects Seth Rollins also if however they want to book him going forward after WrestleMania said they want to put him in the championship program. He can say well look I didn't know I was going to be facing Cody. I expect someone in WWE if I was going to get anyone and then Cody can go on to whatever program he's going to go for which if I had to guess at this point I think the United States Championship would work quite well especially if you're going to go with the American Nightmare gimmick or American Dream or some you know some of American Dream whatever they want to do with it so I think it ticks a lot of the boxes it adds a WrestleMania moment and prestige to it also and you know let's be fair it's going to be a big deal with Cody coming in he is coming from AEW he was someone that started this rival promotion so it's seen as a big deal for WWE to get Cody in next question come from a wrestling by Waldridge saying top five matches for Rhodes you would like to see in WWE great question this one and to be honest really I had trouble narrowing this down to five I think there's so many different possibilities we can see with Cody returning now to WWE but I'm going to do my best then to give you what I think will be the top five that came to the top of my head and of course the first one is Seth Rollins I do feel it's like a fresh match it feels like a big deal Cody coming back in 
at that stage as well to take on someone that has been the main eventer in Seth Rollins. There is sort of someone in and around the area. It shows Cody as a big deal midly. He won't be going straight back into like a mid-card, lower mid-card position when he left the company. It will seem like a big acquisition. So for me, that's a great place to start it off with. Another one would be Roman Reigns as well. Arguably the two faces of those companies, if you want, because Cody was that sort of you know revolution that started AEW people thought of when you know when they thought of AEW when it first started one of the first names you'd think of was Cody Rhodes so him versus Roman Reigns which is arguably one of the first faces you think of with WWE it has that kind of dynamic doesn't it so I'd quite like to see that match of course the dream match for many would be Triple H as well that sort of power of control and if you remember as well Cody with the you know double or nothing with the hammer on the throne sort of thing but I think that one is not going to happen you know with Triple H's uh, situation of course and just hope he gets healthy more than anything else but of course would be something that would have been awesome to see had it been possible i think randy orton would be really cool to see now i know people say well look, come on we've seen that match before but at the same time think of it the legacy group they were part together cody's gone off and done his own thing he's now a much bigger deal now he's come back could he now defrone the viper could it be a thing of legacy could it be perhaps cody starts his own faction like maybe like a dynasty or something like that and gets one over on randy it can also bring matches in with riddle which i think would be quite exciting to see as well so lots of different ideas there uh, and the last one I'll say for you is AJ Styles because I do believe that they've not crossed paths before I believe that as AJ was coming into WWE that's when Cody was leaving WWE so for me that would be quite a cool match to see now that they'll be both on the same brand especially if Cody does debut on the Raw brand as expected and one more bonus match just because I can't help myself how about Cody Rhodes versus Austin Fury because we can't get the Cody versus Triple H match so Cody versus Vince could be a rivalry if you want to go down that avenue, if WWE wanted to play that card, of course, Austin Fury does a lot of Vince McMahon's dirty work, so that would make a lot of sense to book that match, both on the Brawl brand as well, and both would have very bright futures. Austin Fury definitely has been pushed very heavy in the short time that he's been called back to Monday Night Raw. Uh, you know, he was one of the last two at the Survivor Series team, had a great Royal Rumble appearance, last two in the Elimination Chamber, so this would also be a big time deal match in my personal opinion. But those are some of the matches i really like to see. Let me know what matches you would like to see in the comments below. Next question comes from Mike, a Tanner Habs Mike, saying, Now it's official that Cody Rhodes is going to WWE. How should WWE book him as a top star that may entice stars to jump to WWE in the future? Great question, this one, because let's be fair, AEW stars will be keeping an eye and seeing how Cody Rhodes will do in WWE. Let's think of some of the young guns, for example, an MJF, a Wardlow, perhaps a Jade Cargill. Potential stars of the future may look and say, well, is the grass green on the other side? MJF is already saying the bidding war of 2024. That's when his contract is up. And let me tell you, he'll be smart about this. He'll go where the best deal is possible for him. So he will definitely be keeping an eye and seeing, well, if I was to go to WWE, how was Cody booked? Is it going to work for me? What about some legends as well? What about Chris Jericho? If he wants one last hurrah in WWE, maybe a WrestleMania match to end his career off. I wouldn't put it past him if that's what he would want. So definitely i think there's a lot of people will be keeping an eye on how cody does in wwe and the way to do it is just to book him strong wins and losses matter as AEW states so have cody win matches don't have him going for the 24 7 championship don't have him losing two weeks into debuting actually have him come in and win matches beat seth Rollins at wrestlemania is a key thing to do as i say if it is that surprise factor where he debuts on the night maybe not a surprise to us but it's meant to be a surprise in character for seth Rollins. It can work as part of the story and it can work you know going out and through into the summer season for both superstars and particularly for cody making go and win a championship the united states championship makes a lot of sense i can see the one happening at the moment finn balor is the champion but i expect damien priest possibly will be the champion by the time he goes for that gold so i can see that going down perhaps money in the bank should be a contender for that and definitely should be going in and around near the main event picture towards the end of the year that's certainly the way that i would book it for that first full year for Cody and then making sure that next year's WrestleMania as well is a big time match for him there then if you do all those ingredients Cody will feel like a big deal in WWE will feel like a top star and you will turn around and say well those other people that may be looking and thinking well my contract's going up do I want to re-sign with AEW do I want to go to WWE they may be more inclined to think well maybe it's not so bad on the other side let's give WWE a go because well I know if WWE are interested in talents like MGF and Wardlow and people like that they're not going to just get them over to them put them in catering these stars are doing great things in AEW so for that reason yeah I'm pretty sure that WWE need to make this work and need to make Cody look strong and maybe Cody has a genius in making being the first one to make that proper jump time will tell we'll have to wait and see but uh, yeah be interested to see how it will go 
Next question coming from Scott Robertson. That's right, Scott Retro Wrestling. Do you feel Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns needs a stipulation? And if so, what would you have? I can't see it being a normal one-on-one. -on -one. To be honest, neither can I at this point. If you look at the recent storytelling, we've had the beat down in Madison Square Garden where Brock was left a bloody mess with steel steps. We look at this past week on SmackDown where Brock Lesnar went, aka Stone Cold Steve Austin from the late 90s, going with a forklift and you know going walking around into the arena with car doors ripping them off and stuff. It just it was it was fun. It was chaotic, uh, but it does make you feel that it's going to be a bit of a letdown if it's a regular one-on-one -on -one match. You know, at this point, do we really want to see a wrist lock between these two? Not that I think necessarily would get that anyway, but you know what I'm saying it kind of reminds me a bit of the Triple H Randy Orton match from WrestleMania 25 that needed like a no disqualification stipulation added to it, it was so personal at that point it feels that like this has really got personal as well we've had matches as well with Brock and Roman in the past also we've had the the normal one-on-one -on -one encounters so for me I agree with you it needs a stipulation and I think it's just going to be kind of simple no disqualification street fight no holds barred all of those forms of stipulations work perfectly. The only thing that goes against it is that Sami Zayn and Johnny Knoxville is now anything goes. But as I say, WWE has about 15 different stipulations to do this. In fact, last year it was like a Nigerian drum fight for Biggie and Apollo Crews. So they can get around it to do something like that for Brock and Roman, just going with the street fight. But for me, I'd probably pick No Holds Barred. I think that just feels like it would fit their storyline the best. Uh, but yeah, that's probably what I would do because then it gives that sort of freedom in the match to do what you want. If the users want to get involved as well, then they can do, and Brock can destroy them as well. Maybe you can have an element with Paul Heyman in the match also. So there's lots of different things you can do. It gives a lot more creativity and a lot more freedom. And I think it definitely will give a lot more of a fun factor to watch these two wrestle once again at WrestleMania. Because to be fair, the storyline, it has been built fairly all right, in my opinion, with these two. Uh, is it the biggest match of all time? Uh, I'm not sure, but perhaps in the modern era, definitely so. But uh, yeah, I think a stipulation is definitely needed at this point. Let me know what stipulation you'd like to see in the comments below. Maybe it's a Hell in a Cell match. Maybe it's Falls Count Anywhere. Maybe it's Stairway to Hell or something like that. You can use the st steps. Maybe you put Paul Heyman and the users in the shark cage. Who knows? Let me know what you want to see now in the comments below. We mentioned Sami Zayn and Johnny Knoxville in the last question. Well, Jamie Holmes is with us now. He says, what's your opinion on the Sami Zayn Johnny Knoxville match at WrestleMania? Personally, he thinks it could be good. Uh, and Johnny Knoxville is a stunt man, so we know he'll bump well and he may take some cool dives. Plus, Sami Zayn can have a good match with just about anybody. And you know what? I agree with everything you've just said in that question. I think it's going to be a fun match. I think it's going to be a good time. I think it's everything that WrestleMania represents. And they've done a lot of the things they need to to make this right, in my personal opinion. Firstly, they had Sami Zayn drop the Intercontinental Championship, so it's not a title match. That felt a bit weird before, so now taking that title element out of it, it just feels like it's a grudge match. We can go with that. Next off, Johnny Knoxville, he's not a wrestler. Like you said, he's a stunt man. But do you know what's the best way to hide someone in that environment in a wrestling ring? Let's have an anything goes match. You know the toys now will come out to play. We'll probably see kendo sticks, trash cans. It's kind of a hardcore match. It's perfect for that. Sami Zayn can, you know, do the weapons, perhaps give Johnny some stunts, but also it frees things up. What if we get the whole cast of Jackass Forever come out and we see Sami Zayn take a beat down from everyone? You know, people sort of you know jumping on Sami through tables and stuff like that. It could be a real fun time. This could be a real WrestleMania moment. Mark my words, Sami Zayn is not winning this match at WrestleMania, but it fits his character so much better for him to lose. And also, I think he's going to get over more with you know a mainstream audience. This is actually a really big deal. And Sami Zayn, you can tell he's done everything to make this storyline work with all the crazy stuff he's done where it's been insane how it's been booked with the Royal Rumble and the build up where he's been thrown out of the ring every given opportunity it felt a little bit like it was supposed to be just the Royal Rumble but the fact that it's been extended to WrestleMania just shows a credit to the people involved the fact that how well Johnny Knoxville has been received by audiences across the states in arenas you know perhaps even as well on social media uh, I think as well I think it's been seen as one of the cooler ones coming in the fact that Sami Zayn's done tremendous work as well to get the store on over as well and the fact that all these little key ingredients have been put in place, I think it's going to be a fun time. I'm actually really looking forward to it. I think it could be one of the sleeper matches of WrestleMania, just purely because of the fun factor more than anything else. Because like I say, all the ingredients to this now are done right. Next question coming from D's Games. How do you feel about the music change for Edge? Is it long term or will we see Metalingus again? Honestly, I think this stays now for the you know majority of Edge's Hill run, however it's going to be. It's another Alter Bridge song that's been used, so instead of Metalingus, now we've got The Other Side, which is the new song for Edge here. Uh, it did feel a bit weird hearing it this week, him coming down to the ring to something else, but hey, 
it kind of makes sense really when you think about it because metalingus it gets you pumped it gets you going and it really fit edge as well with the old heel narrative that it had been the ultimate opportunist being that desperate character all the time this is a very different heel edge we've got here this is an edge we've never seen before yes he's kind of got a ruthless streak in him he's still got the concertos that we've seen previously but he's very sure of himself he's very confident compared to how he was before this is a different side of him a new form of edge so in my opinion it needed a new song to go along with it and i do think this one this alter bridge song the other side i do think in time it's going to fit this character very well because it's a very good song still and i do think that perhaps as we go into wrestlemania and beyond if this is the edge character we're going to have i think it's going to fit in pretty pretty well i do think we'll get metalingus back one day because i'm pretty sure edge will go back to being a babyface at some point before he hangs up his boots but certainly it's a different change it's a different you know part of his character different dynamic to before i'm not 100 sold in with the blue lighting at this particular point but at the same time i do think that it's fun to see something fresh and i do feel with Edge, he did make a point. We've seen a bit of the reunion tour since he's come back. He's had those rivalries, he's had injuries, and he's said about all these things that went against him and stuff was because he was so, you know, good guy-ish. So to see the bad guy, it's kind of cool to see. It's been interesting to see what the direction is going to be going now with AJ Styles going into WrestleMania, especially on AJ's return. Who will be picking up the W, who won't be, because AJ as well is going to have this renewed babyface now, needing to do the comeback story here, being taken out by Edge. It's got personal very, very quickly, rather than just this dream match element. AJ Styles of old as well has been called on to return. Perhaps we're going to get that from here. So lots of things have come from this. And obviously, with this just subtle change of music, it it does make a big difference into everything as well and uh, for me personally i think it's a positive change even though i do think metalingus is one of the best songs that's ever been done for an entrance music for a wrestler ever uh, i just think for this moment it, it's good that we've gone with something else but i do expect it to come back one day but not during this hill run so if it just heal for six to twelve months for example i expect this music uh, the other side from Waterbridge to remain. Next question now coming from Martin Lorenzo Carrillo asking, what are your thoughts on Roxy signing with WWE and what first feud would you like to see her in? Martin thinks that she could be a top five women's wrestler in WWE in about two to four years from now. And I totally agree. What a signing from WWE. Now, for people that are unfamiliar with Roxy, she was the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion until recently, winning the tournament last summer. Uh, she dropped the championship, of course, after ROH released all their talent. She did that in Impact Wrestling to Diana Prazo in a fantastic match for those who haven't seen it. Go out of your way to check that one out. It just shows you how ahead of time Roxy really is because she's a young gun but she's what like 20 years old this girl seems to have experience under her belt already the way she put matches together she is going to be a force to be reckoned with in WWE for me personally it all comes down to the character they give her and that sort of stuff because if she's just Roxy as she is now I totally agree you know the sky is the limit as an in-ring performer she will be top level one of the top performers out there like you say two to four years from now she definitely will be one of the big names not just in NXT but potentially on a Raw and Smackdown as well. Uh, the question is going to be what gimmick will she be given? That could be the thing that could be a detriment, could be the thing that will hold her back, if anything. As for a way to debut a first time feud, it'd be interesting to see how she'll be brought in, how long it'll be before she's brought onto television. But perhaps with Raquel Gonzalez's injury, maybe she could actually back up Cora Jade in the sort of rivalry with Toxic Attraction. What a way to be brought in. That way you put it right at the deep end, right at the top end of the card as well. I think that'd be quite fascinating to watch. But I don't think that she'll be brought in at that level personally. So wins are the most important so perhaps maybe victory over someone like a Tiffany Stratton could be a good way to start things off or maybe a Dakota Kai I think that could work quite well actually because Dakota Kai going through a bit of a transitional period with her character right now uh, so yeah that would be also a dream match to watch I think Roxy versus Dakota Kai great ring in ring chemistry I imagine these two would have together so maybe that would be the perfect way to start things off but uh, yeah be interested to know your thoughts in the comments switching things up to AEW for our last question this week from GG on Wrestling who do you think we will see in the next Blood and Guts match in AEW what a great question this is now if you've seen some of my videos earlier this year I have suggested the idea of Kenny Omega coming back to AEW to reunite with the Young Bucks to go against Adam Cole and Red Dragon now I don't know if Roderick Strong could ever join All Elite Wrestling in the near future but perhaps him aligned uh, to have the full Undisputed Era perhaps Hang Hangman Adam Page could be the one to actually go back into the Elite that would make a quite fun blood and guts match but this gives me a great excuse now to give an alternative option because uh, obviously we've now got the Jericho Appreciation Society and I've got to say I love the start that they've had together 
really is freshen things up because for me the inner circle had definitely played out uh, and I just think that this group it fits together much better in my personal opinion uh, just the idea as well and there being the sports entertainers as well uh, just getting that heat from the crowd that Jericho is a genius he knows how to reinvent himself and just to take someone as well like a Daniel Garcia to turn around and say I'm a sports entertainer too you know it just it hurts you to the core because you know he's got it within him to be one of the best professional wrestlers in the game in five to ten years time but being under the wing of some like a Chris Jericho Daniel Garcia is going to go from strength to strength from level to level and what's the fun part about that one as well that name there is where we can have the JAS going against William Regal you know his stable of you know Brian Danielson and John Moxie and if they bring some of the young guns in because one of the names they wanted was Daniel Garcia now at this point perhaps we could see we see Willie Utah uh, potentially could be someone that could be joining the ranks somewhere in the near future Lee Moriarty could be another one that could come in so uh, if they get some of these young guns involved there that could be quite fun because that seems to be a group of professional wrestlers going the best wrestlers in the game technical style aggression as well submission based against the sports entertainers that would be a fun end goal because already Jericho and Rampage was was already another golden level as well this week was saying you know we're going to beat those professional wrestlers starting with you know the dark orders uh, john silver and alex reynolds this week when going through all the professional wrestlers and show that sports entertainment is the number one element so if we can get where these two you know fully fledged groups when they're made completely together going in a rivalry and of course then you've got the great excuse for william regal we used to say war games have him say blood and guts i think for me it would be fun it would be something fresh to see as well and i really think that if we have this story and play out like it could do this could be one of the top storylines in professional wrestling in 2022 the sports entertainers against the pro wrestlers and it's just something ingenious again that aew has come up with and of course once again chris jericho deserves all the credit for that the only thing that we need this time though compared to last year if jericho is going to be involved is to not to fall off the top of the cell through the cardboard boxes please just a minor minor thing but that's all we've got time for anyway this week for Ask SCW. Thank you everyone as always for your questions. Go and follow everyone on Twitter as well. Let's grow together in the wrestling community. And there's some great content creators in amongst those questions as well. So go and subscribe to their YouTube channels also. Uh, but uh, like I said, keep an eye out for SCW because finally this week coming up, what is the greatest WrestleMania of all time? That video is dropping on the channel. All the videos are in. The editing is pretty much complete. So that video is is going to be dropping and as well as that what is the greatest wrestlemania match of all time also looking to drop that this week so keep an eye on the channel as well as we are now officially on the road to wrestlemania many wrestlemania themed videos will be dropping now on this channel between now and the show of shows so if it seems like the channel for you then please like share and subscribe as well hit the bell as well set the notifications to all so you know each and every time one of these videos are released in the meantime, why not check out some of the videos on the side of your screen right now. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. Thank you for watching SCW as always. Take care. All the best. I'll see you next time.